you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Mark chapter 14. Um, there's two types, two types of people that are going to be represented in this message tonight, or lesson, however you want to say it. Two types of people. And there's a couple applications. And so I hope you get them. And there's going to be one word, one word, at the, at, when all is said and done, there's this one word that I want you to take with you tonight. Okay? But I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. So Mark chapter 14, we're going to start in verse 53. Verse 53. It is written, And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. What's the scripture say about witnesses against somebody? You have to have two or three witnesses in order for the matter to be established. Isn't it wonderful the Lord is in front of this high priest and the council and all these witnesses are coming forward that story against him and this and this and this and this not one can agree with another isn't that something? you bring a false accusation against the Lord you're not going to stand because there's not going to be anybody to stand with you that's pretty amazing isn't it? But here's another thing. And there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build again made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. Try and try as you may. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it with these which these witness against thee? So how many of you have ever been accused of wrongdoing? All right, if you don't have your hand up, have you ever had a speeding ticket? Then you've been accused of wrongdoing because you get the chance to go to the court and plead your case and say, I'm not guilty, I wasn't speeding, all right? So you've been accused of wrongdoing. It, 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 um, I'm sure your kids, brother... Uh, something went wrong and you gathered them all together. All right, stand in line. Who broke the lamp? Everybody stands back and one, the one stand, left standing is the one guilty, right? Okay. Um, so, if you've been accused of wrongdoing, how did you, what are some reactions you might have? Anger. Anger, that's a good one. Why would you be angry? Well, what if you did do it and you still got accused of it? Huh? What if you did do it and you still got accused of it? I wouldn't have any reason to anything. But why, would you be angry? Have you ever watched the detective show? Shelly and I like detective shows. Um, and they're, they're, they're real detectives and stuff. They're reruns. But, you know, the kind of criminals are, I wasn't there. I don't even know that person. And they're the ones pulling the trigger, or they're the ones driving the car, uh, or people get pulled over, and uh, they find paraphernalia in the car. Whose paraphernalia is I don't know whose that is. That ain't my stuff. Now, nah, come on. All right. What's another reaction? There's anger. There's denial. Fear. Fear. That's a good one. Who said that? Bariah? That's a good one. Fear. Why would you be afraid, Bariah? That's one smart young man there. Very good. Because you fear the consequences. Good one. How about, how about just not say anything at all? Gee, they asked Jesus, why aren't you answering? Why do you? He had nothing to say, right? Because that's not the issue. It's not the issue. But he held his peace and answered nothing. Hmm. All these accusations. You, you'd think he'd defend himself, right? You, you'd want to defend yourself and your integrity and your character. Now, Jesus. 
because he did it was not the issue that was at hand here. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Oh, the next verse is in red letters. Oh, now he does speak. And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witnesses? So, why did he not answer? Well, first of all, he knew what was in man, didn't he? He knew that they had a sense of righteousness that was above others, so they had the right. They felt that they had the right to question him and accuse him and to bring all these things because they didn't want him uh, being who, uh, in the position he was. Uh, if you're trying to take notes with me, uh, I don't have outlines. Okay, I just have scripture and I have point. I have stuff to go with it. So if you take notes, good luck. Um, the next one, he, he wasn't about to uh, entertain them with a debate. You know, you don't debate wickedness. You don't debate wickedness. He, he was not about to debate with them. He knew the truth. He knew what, they were up to, uh, what he was up against. He knew what they were there for. And he had to fulfill Scripture, you know. It was for this cause that he was brought into the world, which he, he says to Pilate later. And... They refused his teachings. They refused his teachings, right? And they resented his popularity, his power, and his wisdom. But what second, second Timothy 2.23 says this, and this is where it applies to us, one, one application. It's where it says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Don't argue with foolish and unlearned questions. They were foolish because they did not believe who Jesus was. That, but then he, when he answered, um, you know, they, he was reviling. They were reviling him, right? They were reviling. And did he revile yet again? No. It says he said nothing until they questioned his deity and his true uh, self, which was he was God, he was the Christ. He could not be silent about that. He said, "I am." When they asked if he was Christ, he answered. So why do you answer this one? Because that's the real issue, folks. Jesus is the issue. Jesus, who he is, is the real issue. It's not about what he did. It's not about uh, what he can do for you. It's Jesus is the Christ. If you can't get past that, then nothing else matters. If you can't get the past... The, Jesus is the Son of God, right, John? He's also God. If you can't get past the fact that He's God, if you can't understand that he, Jesus is God, the rest is, is not going to help you because you're not going to get the, any farther than that. If you're going to get stuck on the Son of God and not go far, for the, farther and say, Father and I are one... It's, it's to no avail. So Jesus answered when he says, Yes, I am the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. Um, uh, then they condemned him because they rejected his authority and even refused. So he just told them he is the Messiah who they were looking for, who they should have known, and they did know, Scripture, that he was coming. He's there in front of their face, and instead of raising him up and giving him the honor and uh, homage or whatever to, to him that he deserves, it was not so. So they were so caught up in their pride and their knowledge and their status that this one threatened it all. And they preferred to conform to a set of rules rather than, lead, than yield to Jesus' authority. It's a sad place to be. You're more, in, uh, more concerned with your rules and regulations than you are the true, uh, trueness of Christ. Um, th I grew up with that. You know, rituals and ceremonies and you got to do this, you got to do that. It wasn't about Christ. It's one thing to be religious and it's another thing to be spiritual. 
You can be as religious as you can be and not be one bit spiritual. What do you think these guys were? They were religious. They weren't spiritual. Had they been spiritual, they'd have seen Jesus as who He was. They would not have rent their clothes saying, No, oh, He's speaking blasphemy. But these were religious leaders. Now, what about the folks that were not religious leaders? The Romans. How did they react to them? I'm glad you asked. Let's go look. Chapter 15 of the same chapter, of the same book. Mark 15, verses 1 through 14. Um, and straightway in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Now was Pilate a religious man? No. Nope. Now he might have had, you know, Rome, they worshipped their own little gods and stuff like that, but who knows, Pilate may not have worshipped anything, you know. He was a ruler. Rulers, they people worship them, you know. So who knows who he worshipped or if he did. So he's he's like an outsider looking in, right? At all this controversy. Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he, Jesus, answering, said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things. But once again, he answered nothing. Hmm. Once again, and Pilate asked him again, saying, Answers thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing. So Pilate marveled. Why does this guy not want to defend himself? What's going on here? They're missing the point. It's not the issue. These, this is not the issue. The issue is... He is the Christ and they cannot see past their rituals and their law and their self-righteousness to see who He was. But Jesus... Uh, um, now at that feast, He released them one prisoner whomsoever they desired. Um, we've got to skip down because we don't need all that other stuff. Okay, yeah. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with them who had committed murder in the insurrection. Even the Romans knew that he was a bad guy. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I should do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him! What? Why? What evil hath he done? Even the ungodly can see that he was being wrongly accused, that there was no fault in him. His wife even says, have no dealings with this man. I've had bad dreams. I've nightmares. Let him go. But they cried all the more, crucify him, crucify him. These are religious leaders. These are the ones who had the oracles of God. They were the ones to testify of the goodness of God. God was standing right in front of them and they were yelling, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! But the ungodly were saying, This guy is innocent. What hath he done? You'd rather have a guilty man released unto you than have this innocent man? But see, he knew. He knew it was for envy. They did not like him. So that's why they, put him, they wanted him crucified. Pilate said, No! Why? Now flip a couple thousand years later to today. The book of Romans mentions that the Gentile, the, the name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles. Why do you think that is? Because we run around 
And we all walk and talk and act just like they do. Just like the ungodly do. And why would anybody want to go to the church house if they see all these Christians acting like heathens? I was talking to Shelly on the way here. There's a... I'm not going to name the church. It is a contemporary church. Um, let's just say the namesake is from Lassie. You guys know Lassie Broadcasting? This guy's name a namesake, okay? And he's in blue jeans, button-up shirt that's two sizes too small and showing off his muscles. And he doesn't have the Bible. He's just got a little touch screen over here, and he's touching the screen and to, to give a message. Touching the screen. And the beginning of the message, the beginning of the service is a rock band. And people are like, why do I want to go to church? I can have that in a rock concert. You know? And, P and Christians today, they're... Years ago, I heard this expression, the Baptists are the worst Christians ever because they eat each other alive. You know? Um, thank God this shouldn't be here. But... Christians are not the most godly people these days. Um, you see it all over the place. And you wonder why it's so hard to witness to people. Because they have a little bit of knowledge of Christ. And just a little bit of knowledge can, go, can be harmful. But here, um, here's Pilate talking, saying, He's innocent. Leave him alone. But the religious leaders saying, No, crucify him. Jump over to John chapter 18, and the story continues. Verses 33. John 18:33 says this. After he sent him to Herod and brought him back and beat him up and stuff, he says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, "Sayest thou this thing of thy, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me?" He's questioning Pilate. Are you asking this because you want to know, or does somebody put you up to this? Are you going to man up, or are you going to be a puppet? That's basically what he asked. So Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? <laughs> he was insulted. Christ insulted him and he caught it. <laughs> I think that's a good, good thing. Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now, now is not... But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? He's like, Oh, if you're a king, I can let you go. They can't, I, they can't crucify you if you're really a king. So I, I, I will wash the clean of this. Uh, Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the... There's the word I want you to get tonight. Truth. There's not a lot of truth going on these days because people do not want to fess up to their actions. They don't want to suffer consequences like Variah said. Um, they don't want to admit guilt. They want to debate. They want to justify their actions. Uh... Christ didn't. He spoke nothing until it had to do with his godness, his deity. He said, I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So what is he saying about the chief priests? Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice what was he saying about the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees were they going to were they listening to him no does that mean they were of the truth or not they were not of the truth 
He just said, everybody, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So they did not hear his truth. They did not receive it. They resented it, they rejected it, and they wanted to rid the world of it. They were not of the truth. Let not the church, especially Charity Baptist Church, our family, stray from the truth. Because that means if you're straying from the truth, you're not hearing the voice of God. And you're not portraying the voice of God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? His mind was to do the will of the Father that sent Him. And He proclaimed the truth. He did not back off. He did not, he wasn't wishy-washy. And He definitely, definitely was not ashamed of that gospel. Because He... It's, he, he said, For this cause came I into this world. That's why he did not speak also. Because if he would have spoke up and defended himself, he might have convinced them that, okay, let him live. Then he wouldn't have been crucified. Then we would still, he wouldn't have died, rose from a, uh, buried and rose from the grave, and we would yet be still in our sins. But that's why he, he didn't do anything. So, going on here. Verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? That's a legitimate question. That's a legitimate question. What is truth? It's standing right in front of you. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Good statement. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. And verse chapter 19, verses 8 and 11, So when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid about... Um, them saying crucify him, crucify him and beat him up and stuff and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus whence art thou? but Jesus gave him no answer he, Pilate still didn't get the, get, get the idea the issue was Jesus and his deity the issue was Jesus had to go through this Jesus is the issue not that he was the king of the Jews not that he was from whatever, wherever he came from he is the Christ. And if you can't get past that, if you can't get that in your mind, then nothing else is, is matter. Uh, nothing else matters. It's just not important. And it goes on, says, um, Then Pilate said unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Still doesn't understand who he's talking to. Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except what were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. Good man! But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. So what he did, he, did, he cowered to the religious leaders of the day. We must not cower to the religious leaders of this day. And the religious leaders of this day are the wicked. Because they are, they have made this nation dark. And we must be the light. We don't debate. We don't go assassin. We don't go bad-mouthing people. We give them the gospel, John. We give them the good news of Jesus Christ. And that is what he's about. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, all those that Philippians that uh, um, Justin preached about, those are what we need to think about. And what's in your, what you think about is in your heart. And what's in your heart is what you're going to speak. But if you're going to let all this garbage in your mind, it's going to get in your heart, and that's what's going to come out of your mouth. And then the, then the Word of God and the name of the Lord is going to be blasphemed among the heathen. 
We don't want that. So, because Pilate had no religious convictions, he could see clearly that the Jews were against Jesus for envy. And with all his authority, Pilate could not convince the chief priests of their error. What did the centurion say at the crucifixion? After he saw all the things that happened, the earthquake and the dark, sky darkened and the, what he cried out, what did the centurion say? Truly, this is the Son of God. Truly. Truly. This man was the Son of God. Even a non-believer could see the innocency of Jesus. You know why? Because he had no knowledge of God, Jehovah, Jesus' Father. So who do you think is the easier person to witness to out there? Those that have some religious convictions or those that have no religious conviction? Those that do not are e e more easily receive the Word of God. They may not get saved right away. It may take them some time. But those, I mean, we find out door to door that those who have strict convictions of their own, it may, they may have some knowledge of God, but it may be the wrong knowledge. I had one guy tell me, I'll bet you I know more Bible than you do. And he is the same religion that I grew up with. And I know he goes, because they don't, they're, they're, they're not taught to read the Scripture. But, uh, you don't you don't debate with them and say oh yeah I'll bet you I'll, I'll have a Bible challenge with you right now no <laughs> you don't do that because then you then you put a wall between them and they get defensive and they don't want to have anything to do with you because you're making the name of the Lord look bad did Jesus pound the gospel into them no whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He is not going to force somebody to love Him and obey Him. He's not willing that any should perish, granted, but He gave us this free will. So when you come across somebody that has religious convictions, you might want to think about your approach. Preach Christ and Christ crucified. Get them to the point where Jesus is the uh, issue before you start slamming their religion. You know? And those that have no religion, oh, they're just wide open field. They have never heard the truth because there's a lot of non-truths out there. And that's what we need to be preaching is the truth. Because the, Jesus said, the truth shall make you free. So we don't need to speak for Jesus. He has already done that, right? Here's the Lord's words. We just give out the Lord's words. We don't need any He doesn't need any help from us. He needs to be, we need to be His mouthpiece. And let him speak for himself today. And uh, we must simply present the truth because Jesus is the truth and his truth shall make them free. Sometimes it takes more than one conversation but there's a point where you must stop speaking to them. There comes a point when you're talking to somebody and they just will not get it in their thick skulls like me. Um, it took me a lot of, lot of time and just took a lot of patience. Then I finally got it, and it sunk in and said, hey, that is the truth, and I received it. Sometimes it takes, it takes more than one time to get, get it through their skull, but if there comes a time where you just have to shake the dust off your feet and let the, door, let the Lord finish the work, okay? Because the Lord is the one that, that, that saves them. It's the Word of God but it's not us. We're just the messenger. The messengers of the great gospel. And at the end of the conversation, what's the only thing that is eternally relevant? Or is that, what's that word? Truth. Truth. The only thing that's eternally relevant in any conversation 
It's the truth. The truth. Pilate asked, what is truth? And it was standing right in front of him. May God help us to take Jesus at His word and present that word to others, whoever they may be. So that's the lesson for tonight. I hope it uh, helps you. Oh, that uh, there's a time, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a time for everything. Time to laugh, time to cry, time to, time to sow and time to reap. But there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. Refuse foolish questions and unlearned questions because they just lead to strife. Jesus is the issue. Okay. Let's go ahead and have a prayer time. Um, I've got one prayer card here from Shelly. Um, Nyla has a doctor's appointment on Friday and they're going to be checking her heart.